In the gas laws experiment, we're going to measure R, the ideal gas constant, by running a reaction inside a sealed vessel and measuring the pressure change due to production of a gas. So we can get the moles of gas from stoichiometry, and the volume and temperature need to be controlled. So think carefully about how the experimental apparatus you choose to use controls temperature and the volume of the gas as much as possible, and think about what the volume actually would be. I want to talk in this video a little bit about the tools you have at your disposal to do this. So one that I'll briefly mention is a water bath. You can run the reaction in a water bath to help minimize changes in temperature due to the reaction being exo or endothermic. You should run the actual reaction inside a 125 mil Erlenmeyer flask. Reason being that the stopper you have inside your gas bags, inside the LabQuest gas bags, matches this vessel perfectly. So we're going to actually run the reaction in here. And it's a reaction between a solid metal and a liquid solution of acid. So think carefully about how to add the solid and liquid to this vessel in such a way that when the reaction begins, no gas will escape. The stopper is a little weird. It's got three holes in the top, but only two of them are open. One of them is sealed off. No idea why this is the case, but who knows, probably some weird manufacturing thing. Make sure to input your pressure measuring tube and your syringe to, del to do deliver liquid into the two holes that are open. So I'm going to go ahead and plug these in. So I have an adapter connected to a stopcock, which is currently open, and a syringe, which currently has some air in it, which I'm actually going to push out right now. That goes in one hole. And in the other hole, I'm going to insert an adapter connected to some tubing. This is ultimately going to go to our pressure gauge. The reason uh, we need to use the tubing instead of just directly connecting the pressure gauge here is because there's just not enough space on the stopper to fit both of those. So I'm double checking that yes, this is the hole, in fact, that uh, is sealed off. And I've got adapters in the other two holes here and here. So I'm ready to hook this up to my Erlenmeyer flask just to demonstrate kind of what the apparatus is going to look like here. And then I'm going to connect this to my pressure gauge. So now, once I close off the stopcock here, once I close off the stopcock, I've got a system that is sealed for which the pressure is being measured right here. So we're measuring the pressure at the end of this tubing, and I've got a sealed system that includes both the space of the Erlenmeyer flask and the tubing volume, right? Before going to add the liquid acid solution and beginning the reaction, it can be helpful to evacuate some air from the flask or remove some air from the flask. To do this, you can open the system to the air, pull out some air. This increases the volume of the system, right, since I'm pulling back on the syringe plunger, and then close off the stopcock with the plunger still pulled back. You can actually see that the pressure has decreased. This is going to lead to a more pronounced pressure increase um, when you add the solution to the metal and start the reaction. And it's going to minimize the chances that, for example, the stopper pops off when the gas is generated. Once that stopcock is closed, you can remove the syringe, squirt out the air, and simply return it to where it was. And at this point, if you're ready to go, 0.8 is totally fine for an initial pressure. You can add acid to this and begin the reaction. 